Hey guys, Eli from Watershed Fly Shop here, and today we are going to be tying this little guy, the Trout Space Sculpin. Uh, this is one of our favorite flies to throw if you need a bigger profile for swinging, swinging flies for trout. It's also a great fly to strip. It's a great fly to do just about anything you want with it, honestly. Small mouth, trout, large mouth, squawfish, if that's your thing. Uh, works for all of them. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll show you how to tie this guy. We are going to start out by prepping our hook. We have got a large black tungsten cone from Spirit River on there right now. We're going to start it with that 140 denier Danville in black. And we are just going to use that to build up a little thread dam in the front here. So, the name of the game with the thread dam is you want it just big enough to keep that that cone from sliding over the eye of the hook. Um, and this wouldn't be a problem if you wanted to use a smaller tungsten cone, but you know, you don't. You really, you really want that weight in the front. You want this thing to swim and jig and get downtown if you're swinging it. And it's the whole, whole point of using tungsten. So, the more tungsten, the better. You want that sucker just a little bit bigger than that. You gotta make sure that you stack up that thread dam really nice or else it'll kinda just roll over the front of the hook on you and not really, you know, won't work. It comes down to. Then in the back here behind that first dam, I like to make it so that it fits pretty snugly inside the cone. That's so that you can really glue it on there and get it nice and snug so that that cone won't move around on you at all. That should do it right there. All right, just throw a quick whip finish up on there with it. Get rid of that. Thread. I like to throw a little bit of super glue up on that whip finish just to keep everything nice and locked in before you before you throw that UV on. Just a little touch. Take that cone. Shove it as far forward on that thread dam as you can. Let that super glue dry out real quick. Got a weird little tag sticking out, so we'll trim that guy. Maybe. There we go. So the way that I keep this cone nice and anchored is I actually just fill it with UV resin. And doing that keeps it from wobbling around, keeps it from sliding off the hook, even if that thread dam does come undone. Uh, so we're using Thick from Loon to fill that cone up. Maybe. Yeah, so you don't have to fill it all the way. I just like to cover that thread up pretty nicely. Get it to all settle in there. And zap it real quick. You gotta zap it a little longer than you would normally just because it's you know a pile of UV resin. That should do it. So now with that in the back there, that cone is not gonna not going anywhere. Oh shoot. And on the front, I like to throw a little bit of flow also from loon up on there just to get a little bit of a little bit of gloss, a little bit of shine, and to keep that keep that thread nice and nice and locked in there where it belongs. So now that is done, you're going to come in here behind the cone, that 50D GSP from Vebus. Probably the best streamer tying thread out there, I would say. Super tough, super thin, and thin and tough enough that it's a real pain in the butt to cut. So 
So we're going to run that down a little farther than you might think because we're going to be making a loop of wire. And so I like to go down to about there. So it's a little, little bit behind that bar, but it might be hard to see, but it'll be easier once we get that wire in there. All right. We're just using a little piece of red intruder wire. You can use any color you want. Just thought red would show up a little better. You can also use just a standard braided steel wire, uh, crafting wire, bite tippet. You can even use heavy mono in a pinch. Uh, so there's that point that I like to wrap it down to. It looks like it might be a little too far, but that is how I like to do it. All right, so now we got that front hook nice and prepped. We're going to whip finish that and move on to that back hook. Okay, so on the back, we are throwing on size 8 Gamakatsu B10S, and we are going to be using that 50 denier Vivas again. This back station is really just a tail. It's just to get that little bit of kick. You can tie this fly with one hook and an extended tail. It's just you don't get the same hookup ratio, especially when you're swinging, swinging it. Um, for all you trout spay guys out there, the like you know, six of you that there <laughs> there may or may not be. Uh, it's a great fly for that with the pretty slim connection it keeps her from fouling up because there's nothing worse than casting and swinging and casting and swinging and casting and swinging through a piece of water that looks delicious and getting absolutely no feedback because you know your fly was fouled up the whole time it's pretty much as bad as it gets all right so we are using rabbit as our tail and our wing on this pattern I like to throw you know maybe a half an inch just over a quarter inch is that the big rabbit or the, no this is throw that up there yeah micro pulsator oh yeah i wasn't sure what the was yeah. yeah this stuff's awesome for smaller streamers it's cut thinner than your standard eighth inch rabbit zonker so it's you know less leather same amount of rabbit swims better stays nice and light so we're just going to throw that sucker on there Right about, let's see, right about there. I only really throw three or four wraps over the back end of that. Um, you're gonna tighten it up, pull that leather back, move your thread all the way to the front so you can start a little dubbing loop. Move that guy back and then forward again. Get your dubbing spinner. We are going to dub up some pearl ice dub. Nice and simple, flashy, white. Awesome. You don't need a ton for this back section. It's really just a little, little highlight on the belly of this, this tail section. So the fly that we're tying, we're kind of going for a more sculpin-y profile as opposed to a bait fishy profile. So we're going for a nice thin tail section with a nice big round head. So there's that. Tie that dubbing loop off. I like to wrap back a little bit just to leave yourself a little bit of room for tying down that rabbit. Pull that rabbit over the top. Stroke it back a little ways. But you don't want too much hair, but you want the right amount of hair, so I usually leave it right about there. Tie it down nice and tight with, you know, a good half dozen strong wraps. And then cut out your rabbit as 
close as you can. There's no real good way to, you know, cut out rabbit super cleanly, so you always kind of got to come over the top of it. Throw in some some thread wraps to clean it up and get it nice and nice and covered up. All right. That 50D. I don't know how many thread wraps that was, but doesn't build up much. Yeah, the eyes not even crowded there. That's what it's all about. Throw that sucker on there, and then we are going to just drop a little bit of super glue on the top there. So while well, that guy dries really quick, you're going to throw that front hook back on. Start that 50D again. And you want to start that stuff right about the barbier hook where you want that thread resting. All right, so that guy should be just about good, right? Yeah, shouldn't ruin anything too bad. All right, so on this pattern, we are going to have both hooks facing down. We're going to thread that wire through. We're not using any spacer beads because we don't need to, we don't want to. We want it to be a pretty tight little connection there. Keep things nice and nice and centered, nice and tight so that they don't foul up on us. Alright, so I like to wrap that back just like that. And if you have a loop that size in your wire, it's not going to collapse, it's not going to wrap, it won't foul. It's just about the sweet spot for wire loops. You're going to come in here, take your crappiest pair of scissors, or Troy's crappiest pair of scissors, or Troy's nice scissors, doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> You're just going to pop that out of the right behind the cone. And you'll notice that I don't double this wire over. A lot of people will double their wire over, but I don't like to. Uh, this stuff is nylon coated, so if you get a nice tight wrap on it, it actually bites into that nylon, and you don't have anything to worry about. So. One of my little tricks that I learned by stabbing myself a lot of times, actually, is just keep a little rubber band on your vise here. And if you wrap that back under the rubber band, it'll keep that hook from turning and falling down on the side of your vise so that when you stroke other materials back, you don't stab yourself. Um, yeah. How many times did you stab yourself before you figured that out? Oh no, I'm not very smart and I don't really invent things and I stab myself enough to have to figure something out. <laughs> so that, that that should tell you that it's, it's been a it's been a good couple times. Um, okay, so we are going to tie in some more of that rabbit. We're going to have those those two overwings connect nicely. So I like to do is measure it out so that if I tie it in, you know, right about there, that those pieces of leather line up. And then with that, you don't get any overhang and you don't have enough to snag up. But you don't want to tie that in yet because you have this little bit of exposed thread right here. I just like to throw a little noodle of dubbing up on there. It doesn't matter too much. It's all about the presentation, though. And the fish care, if you're wondering. Fish only eat flies that they can tell had some effort put into them. Can ask Troy, his flies don't work. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so we are going to throw that right up over there. Get your fingers a little wet. You can use water, spit, coffee, whatever works for you to keep that rabbit back. So you'll notice that that actually ended up being a little bit longer than ideal. And so we're going to come in here and we're going to. Turn just a little bit of that out, and you'll see how those wings marry pretty nicely, and don't have don't have any 
room to make up for. So there's that. All right, and on this front section, again, we're going to do a little ice dub dubbing loop. But on this one, I like to do it a little bushier. All right, well, just been informed that we're running out of battery on the camera, so it's time to hustle it up. <laughs> Either that or I'm talking too much and he wants to let me down easy. <laughs> Don't know yet. So we're going to use that ice dub pearl again. This time we're going to get a pretty good, pretty good sized chunk. And if you put it in your dubbing loop facing the opposite direction of your dubbing loop, instead of going straight up and down, it goes side to side. When you spin that up. All right. So when you spin that up, you're going to pick it out just a little bit. We want it to kind of cover that that joint where you put that that back hook on just a little bit it's not a huge deal I like to pull that rabbit back so you don't have any of that black thread showing through too bad you know it's all it's all personal preference you're gonna spin it up you want to leave a good amount of space back there behind the cone because we still have to put a collar on this bad boy body nice and dubbed on there You're just gonna pull that rabbit wing nice and over the top I tie it down with hair on it so you get that little flare right there you can tie it down without hair on it it's really you know it's whatever you like might be time for a new pair of scissors alright so tie that leather down so that you get it as even as you can because we are going to be wrapping some hackle feathers on here and it makes it makes it a little easier to have things nice and even. Alright, so we are good on that. We're gonna throw just a little bit of red saddle in there just to get a little bit of contrast, maybe a gill pack, maybe an injured sculpin. Maybe that fish just likes red. You know. You never know. Gotta try everything, right? This isn't a ton of hackle, it's just a short little, I think this is about an inch section. It'll do probably two or three turns. And call it good. I like to pull it all pretty well backwards. Um, but this stiffer saddle will act as a prop for that mini marabou that we're going to put in pretty soon here. Get over the top of that guy, pull everything back. Trim that stem out. It's actually even a little bit more than I prefer, but that's all right. Okay, so for the collar on this guy, we are using Grizzly Marabou from Hairline, um, both in the tan color and the Sculpin Olive color. Um, I like to use that tan on the back so that we can use the Sculpin Olive in the front and get some good, get some good contrast to the rest of the body color. Um, so we're going to tie that guy in by the tips. This stuff can be pretty hard to work with, um, just because it is a really small, thin, fragile feather. But just stick with it. It's worth it. This stuff's delicious. Alright, so you'll see we still got a good amount of space up before the cone there. That's because we still got another feather or two maybe even to put in there. We don't want to wrap that, that collar forward too much right off the bat. We kind of want to leave some space for the rest of that, the rest of that collar. If you want, we want that marabou to stand up as straight as it can so they get the most the most loft out of it and the most profile out of it. Alright, so we're going to tie that sculpt an olive piece in by the tip again. And I've got a little bit of a divot there in front of the cone that I've got to fill in. It's going to take, it's going to take a minute with that 50 denier. <laughs> Stuff's awesome, but it doesn't, doesn't build bulk very well. That's for darn sure. Alright, so now take that sculpt and olive piece and go ahead and stroke it back. Get it all nice and turned up the way you want it. And 
So I don't think that guy will quite be enough. I think we're going to have to throw another another feather in there. All right, let's see if I've got one. I had one. Just couldn't tell you where it went, though. I'm just grabbing another one out of there. We'll use this grizzly marabou a lot, or you can also use the grizzly soft tackle. A lot of those pieces are pretty, pretty marabou-y as well. Tip again. Wrap it up. And this one, this finished feather, you really want it to, to sit pretty darn flush to the uh, to the cone. So you gotta, you gotta kind of plan out where that guy'll end up. You're done with it. <laughs> that ended up pretty pretty close. Not perfect, but pretty close. So sometimes you just need that second feather to fill it out. Fill it out, and that first one was just really wispy. Um, you want, you do want the head of this fly to build a little bulk. You don't want it to just lay down. Why is that? When it's in the water. Well, so sculpin are actually kind of teardrop shaped fish. Weirdly enough, they've got really skinny tails and really big fat heads. Uh, another deal with putting a big collar on this fly is it actually adds movement to the fly. So when you've got, all right, so I'm just putting a couple of whip finishes in there. When you've got more material in the front, what will end up happening is your water actually, when it's when it's pulling through the water, it actually breaks around that collar and then comes together. And when it comes together, it makes that tail kick. And so you'll notice that some flies you have to jerk strip them, or you have to jig them, or you have to move them in a certain way to get them to move. Flies like this with a big collar on them, just straight up move, they just move. And uh, that's a great, great attribute to have for a swing bug because you're not always gonna be stripping it, but you always want that tail kicking. So there you go, that is the completed fly. <sighs> Hope you enjoyed it. You can find all of those materials on watershedflyshop.com. Have a good one, guys.